So here is your 4-3 homework. I'm going to kind of do like I do um, on any other Wednesday. I'm going to go through um, and uh, pick out some problems and just go through the process. Okay. So let's start with uh, number one. I'm going to do um, probably just like write down this column here. I think will be a good... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, a good way to go. I might, might pick out a few other ones. I definitely want to do a graph. Let's do maybe this graph. <clears throat> excuse me, so let's do some of the ones I've listed uh, or I've highlighted. Okay, so let's start with number one here. Um, it says convert that to exponential form. Now, I'm going to write above here the, the different forms. If we have the log base b of a number equals the power, that can be converted into uh, exponential because we can say that the number is the base b to a power of p. So that's kind of where you can <clears throat> think about how to convert them back and forth. Okay, so let's do that for part one uh, a. Now, when we look at it, you just kind of want to identify what is your base, what is your number, what is your power, and once you've identified those things, then we can just convert it. So the number eight is the base two to a power of three, and that's what you want to do for one a, b, and c. Okay, you're just rewriting it, you're not solving it, you're not doing anything, you're just trying to take that exponential form, or I'm sorry, that log form, and write it in exponential form. Anybody have any questions about 1a? Okay, let's now go the opposite direction with 2a. So 2a says to convert to logarithmic form. So identify your base your power, and your number. Now, the log is going to go in front of your number with the base written very small. That tells us what type of logarithm we have. And the number goes inside, and that is equal to the power. So does anybody have any questions at all about that conversion from uh, exponential to log or log to exponential? <coughs> Okay, so now let's do some actual simplifications. Um, I'm going to maybe do more than just what I've shown. Um, what I've shown, I have a natural log, I have a log, and I have a other type of log. I do want to do one that's fractional, so I think I'll do B as well. Okay, so remember what a logarithm is saying. A logarithm says, what power could I... Put on the base showing to get the number inside. What power could I put on the base showing to get the number inside? So for 3a, you're really asking yourself, because the answer, remember, is that power. You're saying, what power do I put on a 2 to get 64? Well, just start counting on your fingers. 2, 4, 8, 16. 32, 64. It takes six twos to get the number 64. So the answer is six. That's the power I have to put on a two to get the number 64. Okay. Now let's move over to uh, B. Now B says what power, and I'm going to kind of put it above it, what power What I put on a fraction, one-fifth, to get 25. Well, let's think about something here for a minute. Oh, so I like, I like that. We got the, yes, the negative is going to flip it. So I'm glad you guys got the negative. So the negative is going to flip it. And then you caught yourself. The two 
on a 5, a 2 power is going to do 5 squared, which is going to turn it into the 25. So that's kind of a, a unique uh, kind of way to think about it. And so our answer here is negative 2. Again, the negative is going to flip it. The 2 is going to turn it into a 25. And now let's look at a natural log. So remember what this is really saying. This is really a log-based E. So the question is, is what power do I put on an E to get an E squared? What do you think? What's the answer to this one? What power would I put on E to get an E squared? Yeah, it's just the two. What's really great is if these two are next to each other, they are inverses of one another, and so your answer becomes that power because the answer to a logarithm is the power, and so that's why the two appear so nicely. Now, a similar thinking can happen with G. For G, we just have the word log. Can anybody tell me what's the base if we don't see it, if we just see the word log? You got it. It's a 10 base. So this is really the log base 10. Now, this is actually, you got it, it is. Riley, that's perfectly correct. Can you tell us how you got it? Can you, you maybe unmute for a second and tell us where you got a negative 3 for an answer? <laughs> if you want to share that with us. What'd you do? How'd you get negative 3? Well, I'm going to try to share <laughs> Riley's thinking. I don't think they want to share with us. But um, if you think about it, that is a 1 1,000. That is also, yeah, yeah, exactly. That is three decimal places over. That's why it's a 1,000th. Perfect. Think about scientific notation. That is 10 to the negative 3. Oh, gotcha. Um, so because of that, these two cancel out very much like our natural log did in the other problem. And so we get negative 3 as an answer. You can also think about it as 10 to the third makes 1,000. Then we have to flip it over. And then that makes it um, negative uh, as an exponent. There's lots of ways to think about it. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. OK. So that is kind of that section. Um, I was just going to give you some hints about H. Let's take a look at H. Now, H is a little bit funky because of the square root, okay? So I'm going to do some little tricks for you that might help you in the future. A square root is the same as a one-half power. So that's one thing that's really nice. We've got that one-half power now, and what power do we put on something is essential. Earlier we had a fraction, so if we just look at this part in the middle here, um, what is a way that we could write one-third so that it is just 3 to a power? How could one-third be written as 3 to a power? Yeah, it's going to be written as a negative 1, and then exactly right, that negative 1 multiplies by the 1 half there. So let me write that in two steps for people that need to see that. So you could write that as 3 to the negative 1. We already have that 1 half power there. The rules of power say you're going to multiply those. And so the question is, what power do I put on a 3 to get 3 to the negative 1 half? Well, that's why the answer is negative 1 half. So kind of a neat one, okay? Okie dokie. Now let's go to for uh, A and B. Now, these are just simple calculated ones. Don't make them harder than they are. The only thing you have to remember is for 4A, you want to hit the natural log button. So make sure you're using that log base E button. And please watch whatever type of rounding they say. Uh, I said to two decimal places, and so our first one would be 
Now for part B, you have to use the log button. So you're going to do the log of 26, and you would round that to 1.41. Okay? So those are basic calculator ones. So, you know, if you have your own scientific calculator, maybe pull that up, put those in, make sure you get the same number I did so that you um, uh, make sure, you know, you're on the right track. Okay? Any questions about the top before we move on to the graph? Okay, so the last one I want to do is the graph. Now, unfortunately, this is kind of a really yucky problem, but I wanted to put it in there because I did see um, this type of problem before. <clears throat> if you want, you can think of this as a transformation and this is going to take the natural log of x function and just shift it over to the left one. So if you want to graph the natural log of x, then take some of the points that you plotted and scooch them over one to the left. That works just fine. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, if that didn't occur to you, how you could find it. Now the natural log is base E. So basically we want to know where E to the first equals x plus 1, E to the 0 equals x plus 1. Um, Emily, I will show you. Give me one second and I will show you that very thing. Uh, and then E to the negative 1 equals x plus 1. Now, why these three points? Well, those three points, e to the first, e to the zero, and e to the negative one, are the usual x's that I would plug into this particular parent function. So, they're going to be decimals, unfortunately. We're just going to have to enter them into a calculator. Each one you subtract one. So, this one is e to the first minus one. So, if I put that into my calculator, e to the first minus 1, that is 1 1.7, uh, let's just go 1.7, and then this next one is e to the first, or I'm sorry, e to the 0 minus 1, which is 0, and then this next one <coughs> is uh, e to the negative 1, let me throw that in my calculator, minus 1, which is negative 0 0.6. So when making the chart for this one, I'm going to use 1.7, 0, and negative 0 0.6. Okay. Now, what am I going to get? Well, the natural log of 1.7 plus 1 is just the natural log of E. So this one is 1 and this one is 0, and this one is negative 1, okay? Because remember, it's the power, and I have forced these to be e to the 1, e to the 0, and e to the negative 1. So I have forced those to work out exactly the way I want. So um, let's talk about the original versus this new, new function. So I'm going to draw the original. and then we'll draw the parent. So the original function has an asymptote, I'll do that in green, has an asymptote at zero. It goes through this point, it kind of goes like that. And I hope that's the right height. I think it is, it's, it's close. That is your parent. The um, the new, the new function has just scooched over to the left one. So there is an asymptote here. And then um, let's plot the points. So at 1.7, we are up at 1.
at 0, we're at 0, and at negative 0.6, we're at negative 1. I guess my green one should have been a little, a little down a little bit. <coughs> So that's what the parent looks like. All we, all that's happened is, is our function has scooched itself over to the left one unit. And uh, so natural logs are, uh, you know, just kind of funky. Now for, um, for A, it is one of the parent functions. Because it's a base 2, I would plug in 2 to the first, 2 to the 0, and 2 to the negative 1 in order to graph that one. You should be showing me a vertical asymptote each time. The vertical asymptote, like for B, is where x plus 1 equals 0 or negative 1. That's your vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote for A is where x equals 0, which is just 0. So uh, usually the parents have vertical asymptotes at 0. Um, if you have anything with the x that could have possibly moved them left, right, up, down, whatever. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about 4, 3? Okay. So um, give me a second to stop this, and, and then I will start your fourth for homework.